Jim Morrison responds to questions about why young people like rock music and why they conform to liking the same things. Jim goes on to provide insights into the issue of conformity and the resistance by many people of experiencing life firsthand rather than watching it. Some incredible perceptions throughout the entire conversation, possibly even more relevant nowadays. Adolescence and uh, early youth, the, um, the fires are burning fastest, right? And your energy level is probably at its highest. And uh, so it demands a kind of raucous, screaming type music. And uh, I'm 26 now, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting more interested in, uh, in jazz, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, I can't even listen to the radio anymore. You know, I like old, old blues, cats, and uh, uh, early rock and roll, and, and some other things. But frankly, I find most of it really boring. <laughs> yeah, well, they're they're being programmed by their radios. They only play uh, the majors. The major radio stations, rock stations, only play. 30 songs over and over and over 24 hours a day and it's been proven that what you hear the most is what you like the most so there's really no choice involved someone is programming it well you're asking for an answer the answer is for everyone to stand up and say I'm me and be fully aware of that fact and let everyone else know it yeah. that you are yourself and express it what it is is somehow life gets restricted to what can be seen rather than what can be touched or experienced physically I don't know whether it's a natural uh, civilized human uh, fear of uh, involvement because, you know, touch can lead to a lot of uh, touch. Physical involvement leads to all the, you know, the real basic existential moments in life. Sex, death, love, you know, they have really nothing to do with, with seeing experiencing second hand you have to get in there and actually do it and i there just seems to be some kind of natural civilized inclination to avoid contact with the nitty-gritty of life there is though you know i can remember when i was in high school and even college which wasn't that many years ago and uh Sex was still uh, in the Victorian age. It was uh, very hush-hush. Uh, you know, if you suspected a girl of, uh, you know, one of the ones that was doing it, you know, it was like kind of, a, you know, locker room conversations and all that. And I think uh, that this this new group of kids that have come along have... You know, I mean, sex will always be a mystery and will always have its hang-ups and strange things about it. But they're much more free. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, accepted as a fact of life and not, you know, not something to be uh, uh, snickered about in private, you know, behind closed doors and all that. I think there, there definitely is a new style I think it, it was a necessary reaction to some kind of uh, weird uh, repression. I don't know how it started, you know, when, but uh, it was totally unnatural. And I think uh, that that is one aspect of the new thing that is happening that is compl completely beneficial. Uh, sexual, the repression of sexual energy has always been the grandest tool of a, a totalitarian system it the 
If everyone was uh, free in their sexual activity, uh, how many people would show up for work? That is, that's the basic problem, whether progress, uh, the progress of civilization, the evolution of a civilized culture is really worth it. And, uh, you know, there have been some amazing accomplishments, beautiful accomplishments, but the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth the uh, repression? And that's something everyone has to answer. Uh, every second of their life.